Hi everyone, this is the 12th video in my Python series. Today we're going to be adding collision so the ball doesn't go off screen. And yes, yeah, it's going to be pretty fun. So let's just jump straight into it. As you can see, we had the, this was where we left off. We added the handle collision function, but we didn't really do anything to it. So let's just see what we can do. So the ball moves off screen, and then you can use your keys to move. Paddles. Okay, so that's like all. That's all we did yesterday. So, uh, I mean, last time. So let's just jump straight into it. So yeah. So this is gonna be the trickiest function. Um, we're gonna start with the ball because that's gonna be the easiest. So the first thing we want to check if it hits the edge of the screen, or if it hit the top of the screen. So let's just do that. So if ball, and then the ball has a Y, and then we want to say plus the radius. So the ball dot radius. So if we just said the ball dot Y, it would be the center of the ball. If we add the radius to it, that would mean it's the ball outer layer. So that's what's going to happen. And then if that hits the height, so if it's greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to the height, which we should put in all caps, then what we want to do is we want to get the ball's y velocity, and then we want to multiply it, multiply it, and then set it equal to negative one. So what's this going to do is it's just going to flip the ball's location. We're going to do something similar for the width, so let me just copy that. Or wait, we also need to check if it hit the top of the screen, uh, the bottom of the screen. We don't need to check the x-axis. So uh, I'm going to just use control. Oh my god. I'm, only, I'm just going to use control D for this. And then fix that. Fix that. Then I'm gonna put else if oh, I just need to put else. The ball's y is subtracted by the ball's radius, so the 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 bottom edge of the ball is less than or equal to zero. Okay, so like that, and we still want to do the same thing, is because multiplying something by negative one is just gonna reverse it. So if two if two times two is equal to four, two times negative two would equal to negative four. So that's how the math works. And yeah, so if we try, so instead of moving it in the x x direction, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make this zero, and then I'm gonna make this itself dot max spell so to see how it actually bounces. So I thought max fell. So now we can see how it bounces on the top and bottom. So it bounces and it bounces and then it's just going to keep bouncing because we didn't add an X parameter. So it's just going to be bouncing right there. But yeah, it works. So we just need to um, switch that around. And you guys can play around with this to get something you like. So, if you want a bigger ball, then just make the radius a little bigger. So, we're going to make this the max fell, so self.max fell. And this is gonna, just going to be zero. And yes, I am forcing oops in this video, so. Now, now it's the hard part. We need to check if the paddle, if the ball hits the paddle. This, this, after we finish this, we'll have an actual functional game loop, so that's going to be fun. So uh, I'm going to check if the ball, ball.xvelocity <coughs> is less than zero, less than zero. And then I'm going to do, we want to check something else. First, this is just what we're doing for now. We need to check something else. So, uh, I think we fixed that there. Yeah. Handle collision. The ball dot x velocity. And then, 
what we want to do. Yeah. So we want to do another if statement to see if something else is true. I know you can just put and here, but that's just going to make a huge line, and I don't want to do that. So just for good practices, we're going to do this. So after that, we want to say ball. If the ball's y coordinate is greater than or equal to the left paddle, paddles y. Oh wait, we called it our LP, so LP dot y and ball dot y y is less than or equal to lp dot y plus lp dot height colon so yeah, so that's the statement we need there. And then it's Pepe is giving us a warning saying simplify change comparison. Yeah, it's, it it does something like this. We want the and, so let's just like leave it like that. We're going to hover this <coughs> and then click on more actions. And then So that's what we want to do. Now, another if statement we need to add is if the ball's x, just hang in there, if the ball's x is subtracted by the ball's radius, is less than or equal to the left paddle, so lp.x plus the lp.width, then we want to say something like ball dot x fell times equals times equals one and then times equals negative one I mean and after that we want to do something called the middle y so middle underscore y it's equal to the left underscore paddle dot well, it's equal to the LP dot y and then plus the LP dot height divided by two so it's going to be the y axis wherever it is plus the left paddle dot height and then we just want to divide that by two to get what the middle y is and then we want to say difference in y, so I'm going to write diff in y is equal to middle y minus the ball, minus the ball's y, so ball dot y. And then we want something called the reduction factor, so ball dot y reduction factor to reduce, is to reduce like, um, I think, the ball's max velocity, so reduction underscore factor is equal to. We want to use order of operations to first calculate the uh, the uh, half of the height, so LP dot height divided by two, and then what we want to say is divided by the ball's max velocity. And then what we want to say is the y velocity is equal to the diff in y divided by the reduction factor. And the reduction factor. After that, we want to use the balls, the y velocity. And then is equal to negative one times the y, y velocity. Because this is just some advanced calculations to see where exactly the ball is gonna hit. So let's try it by actually making it 
hit the left paddle. So let's see what happens when we hit the left paddle. I'm going to go to the ball, and then instead of self uh, max spell, I'm just going to use negative self dot max spell. Just do that, and we sh it should be running flawlessly. Yep, it hit the right left paddle. Uh, I know you guys couldn't see that, so I'm going to bring it back here, hit X, and then run it again. So, it's happening here, but just hear me out, it works. I'm going to try hitting it just in time. So as you can see, the ball's right there. It hits, and then it blocks. Let's try actually moving the paddle, which should cause it to move. It should make, take it off the path. So I went down. Or let's just fr do the right one first, and then we'll try to do that. So after we did the handle paddle collision, what we want to do is we want to take this, copy it, and then just paste it right here. And then we'll want to do something a little different, just very little. So instead of if ball.x, we just want to say else. Because it's gonna if we if it doesn't hit there, then it's just gonna be the opposite of what we just did. And then what we want to say is ball.y is greater than or equal to the right paddle, so rp.y, and ball.y is Less than or equal to rp dot y here, plus the right paddle dot height, the ball dot x, and so what's that? So the ball dot x plus ball dot radius is equal, greater than or equal to. Uh, we can we only need to say right paddle dot x, or else if we add the width, it's going to be the left corner of the right paddle. So that's going to be weird. Um. And that's basically all we need in here. We just need to change everywhere. It says LP to right P. So RP is to that, RP. And then we have a different Y, middle Y, plus all that Y, reduction factor, RP, all that max fell. And then uh, the Y velocity is going to be the, the difference in Y minus, divided by the reduction factor. Correct. So that's all we need. And then, secondly, let's just make this back to normal, so self dot velocity, and yeah, we should be good and should be good. So we can see that, and okay, so that's a bug. It just doesn't want to respond. So we did something wrong here. So let's just. I think. Okay, so. Let's put negative here to see what it happens. So it wants to go to the left. It just doesn't want to go the other way. So I did that. It still goes left. And the thing is, it's, a, it, it's not bouncing off the left paddle. So I think I made the range of the y, y paddle, the right paddle, a little too big. So let's see what I did wrong. If the ball dot y is greater than the right paddle dot y and the ball dot y is less than or equal to right paddle dot y plus the right paddle dot height. Okay, that's correct. And then if the ball dot x plus the oh I did minus the ball dot radius. So we need to add plus the ball dot radius is greater than so this should be greater than or equal to right paddle dot x. Now we need to save the ball's x velocity. So that should be all we need to do. Could be that should that was that was the bug. So we can see that it moves. Now let's just move a little bit down. That should move it up there, like that. Well, something wonky happened. Watch this. It goes off screen. And then I think what happens is it at, at one point it hits the top and then it goes the other way and comes down. And this is just an infinite loop. Yeah, so that's what's going to happen. Now it's going to come down. Yeah, like that. Now I need to add something called the re reset function to see if it goes off screen. And yeah, this is like, that's the end of this game. We have a game loop, functioning game loop. So this is like.
And now, we need to add a feature where we can actually see our score. So, let's add, so we added the left score and the right score, which both are equal to zero. And we need to add a score font, I believe. So let's just go all the way up here. Yeah. So, we want to create a font called, com uh, and then just set it to Comic Sans. So, score fonts, underscore fonts, caps, is equal to, and the score font is equal to pygame dot font, and then in pygame dot font, pygame dot font is its own module, and then there, we, there's something in there called sys font. And first of all, we need a name, so I'm gonna use sans serif. You guys can use whatever you want. And serif, and then after that, we want the size. Uh, the size is just going to be uh, 50, so not too big. And then after that, we want to add um, bold if you want to. I'm just going to set it to 700. And then italic, I'm going to say false. False. There. So that's all we need. And then that, the second thing what we want to do is go down, down, and then <coughs> um, let's see here. So to, the way we want win is we need to add something called the one counter. So, so we need to update the score every second. So let's, we need to go to the draw function, right? Because in our draw function, we have to draw everything. So let's go to draw. Right before we say pygame.display.update, and we draw the ball, we want to blit the left and right score. So we also want to get our left and right score. So let's just call it ls and rs. ls and rs. And then come here and then pass it to our draw function. Draw ball, left score, right score. Now we have our left score and our right score. And if we go in our draw, now is the time we need to blitz it to the screen. So when we blitz, uh, when we make the background black, we want to say left, the left score should text so the left score text should equal to score font dot render and then we want to say a part in an f string so it's uh, f string is equal to um, is formatted string so that and then we want to say left uh, ls and then there's something called the anti alias um, don't ask me what this is. I don't know. We just need to put one here and what Now I, I'll show at the end. I'll show you guys how to invert your game background. So yeah, and it, it won't be that much of a good approach, but we can deal with it and then we can give this a background if we want so I'm gonna do red. I'm gonna just give it like a red background so it's going to be like basically what white was but it's rgb so we have to say 255 comma 255 comma no no it's just 255 comma zero comma zero that's the left score text now for the right score text um it's going to be not much different so we just need to do this and then the right score text. And then we need to render the right score. And yeah. And I added this weird space. And then after that, we want to add, we want to blit everything to the screen. So when that blitz, the left score text with width divided by four. Width 
divided by 4, so this is the position, and uh, minus our left square dot get width. So minus our left underscore score text dot get width. And then we want to divide that by 20, so let's just do that. Uh, I mean 2. We want to divide this by 2, and then we want to put it at 20. So that's what we want to do for the left score, and then just duplicate that for the right score. All we need to do is change this to right score text. This is going to be width divided by width times 3 divided by 4. So width times, and then we're going to just wrap that in parentheses, and then write 3 times 4, I mean 3 divided by 4. So this will just get 3 fourths of, of the width. And then our left underscore score underscore text that get width divided by 2 is equal to 20. And I think this should be the right score text underscore score text that underscore text that get width and we want to say divided by 2 20 yeah so we should see like 0 and 0 if I run it at the top with a background and then you can see it's kind of bold but if, if the ball goes off screen we can't really see the score update and since I showed you guys how to make it not bold, you guys can just use that code and turn it bold or italic or however you want. And you can add whatever color you want here. I'm just going to remove the color since I, I honestly don't like it. So just do that and then do that. Oh. Control delete does something weird, so. White. Now that we have that in place, let's actually update our score every second. So I think that's in our main. Let's go down. Um, every second, we're going to create something called one is equal to false. And then. So there's going to be something. I, th I think there's going to be a win function, so one sec, guys. Yeah, so, um, yeah. So, we need to create, we just need to add a if, if win thing. So, while, ru while we're running, right before we get our events, we want to do this, so. Tap, tab, enter, enter. If all that x is less than zero, colon one, then we want to say right score plus equals one. And I'm actually I'm so, I'm sorry because this is supposed to be after we update the ball all to move so just do, highlight that and then you shift alt to move it downwards it should be right after we make the ball move the ball that x is equal to if it's less than zero then add to one to the right score and yeah ball that x is less than zero add one to the right score and then what we want to say is reset the ball so that's just going to give put it to the center and then we're going to do something similar for the left score so elif ball dot x is greater than the width I think then we want to add to the left score and then we want still want to reset the ball and then the last step that we want to add is this. I want to say one is equal to false.
And then what we want to do is if one colon text is equal to score font dot render. Oh wait, we forgot to add a few ifs right before this. So if the left score, if left score is greater than or equal to the winning, oh, the win greater than or equal to the winning score, then so we can put a colon, and then we want to say one is equal to true, and then we want to say win text is win. So we can say left one exclamation point, and then we want to do the same for the right. So. Alice. One true. And then one to right one. And if you guys don't want to use left and right, you guys can add explicit inputs for player names. So I'm not gonna do that, but it's it's gonna be a good if if you guys add that, it's gonna be good. So if we if we win, then what we want to say text is equal to score font dot render the win text one white and then we want to say win dot lit text um, uh, width divided by two. And then we want to use minus text decorate with with divided by two. Oh wait, divided by two. And then we put the mm, height divided by two minus text dot get height. Divided by two. How do I always get out of this? Divided by two. And then we blit that to the screen. <coughs> Forgot to add another capital N. And then we want to add to make the Pi Games display update. So Pi Game dot display dot update. And then we want to say pi game dot time dot delay so time dot delay, and then we want to say five sec five seconds so five hundred milliseconds, and then we want to say reset the ball, reset the paddle, reset the paddles. Oh wait, I think we didn't add the reset function for the paddles, so it's not going to be that much of a problem if we don't reset the paddles, and. We'll say ls left score is equal to zero, rs is equal to zero, and then after that we can just quit this. Or when we added that pi game quit function, we'll just break this instead of quitting it. And yeah, if name is equal to main, we'll run it. So let's just run pong. So we have an actual game loop. So some of you might want to. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna make this to see if we can get to ten. Let's see here. Sans serif winning score is ten. So that's just gonna be playing. Uh, after that happens, I'll show you guys how to invert the theme of this and make it bl make wherever it's black to white and white to black. So we can see left one, five seconds. After five seconds, it should just go away. Yeah. <coughs> so, secondly, what we want to do is make 
this inverted because a lot of you guys might want to have this inverted. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy paste this. Copy paste. Or just go home, hit control D. And then control slash, control slash. And then we're going to make white. So we're going to write black here. And then we're going to write white here. So what's going to happen is essentially we're just inverting that. So it's going to look something like this. So yeah, that's what we want to do. Um, if you guys want it inverted, just go ahead and make it inverted. So that's the end of this game. Um, be sure to um, like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you don't miss another video. And with that said, see you in the next video. Peace.